Ladies and gentlemen, we're back here. Uh, it's the sports. Uh, our newspaper stand, our village square, our barber shop, where we connect with the absolute most intriguing, most most you know exceptional personalities, and we vibe about everything. Uh, under the sun with as little filter as possible. Uh, today, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's cliche, but of course, it, there's no other way to put it really. Not, I mean, not, 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 not like I can think of now. Um, so when you say it needs no little introduction, it needs no introduction, of course, it needs no introduction. Uh, today, I'm, I'm hanging out with um, the one, the only, Kelechi Amadiobi. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, Can I get an amen? <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. Um, if, if you know uh, anything about anything about you know the the, the, the where should we even start? Photography or art or <laughs> okay? No, so let, let me let me do this. Non <laughs> On Instagram, I made an appreciation post. Oh wow! <laughs> My goodness. I was checking through stuff and I found Yeah. I found this. Mad of nature. That was my <laughs> first. Wow. Where did you find this? I know you, I, 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 there's a chance that you don't have it. So my plan is actually to, you know, my speaking, Wow. It's actually to sell it to you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is my exhibition brochure. <laughs> my first major show, you know. Um, now, this exhibition held at the Russian Cultural Center. Um, 1997, you know. Okay. And that was, I think Russia was still together as a country then. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> you know, the and Russia, you know. Yeah, the Soviet Union. You know. Russia was a major player in the cultural sector then. Yeah. Just like the French cultural yeah, sector and the Gothic state in those days. Yeah, you know. Um, so this was my first main exhibition as a painter. And it yeah. sort of launched me into the Lagos, uh, you know, uh, environment, you know, the art environment, so to say. Okay. Oh, nice. So, uh, nice, remember nice. where I picked this up? Nice, nice. Do you remember where I picked this up? No. You will not remember. No. Okay, let me, re let me refresh no. your memory. No, I can't. Um, sometime around uh, 98, 99, something around 99. Yeah. I tracked uh, you down for an interview, you and a friend of yours. Yeah. Uh, Uche Edoche. Oh, Uche Edoche. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Uche was, I think, he was staying with me then. Yes. <laughs> uh, I was, I was um, editing uh, a magazine, a lifestyle magazine oh, you know, wow. called Grand Star. Okay. Uh, yeah, and it was supposed to be a niche. The, the positioning was, was niche, you know, Cultural, yeah. Um, we, we wanted to to go against the grain. There was a lot of the celebrity stuff, yeah. Yeah, the fame weeklies, mm -hmm. the uh, soft sell stuff, the gossip, and all of that. And we felt like there's a segment, an active segment of of society that wasn't getting uh, the right kind of coverage. Yeah. So we set up Grand Style, and we wanted to like you know take up that space and all of that. Uh, what happened to the book after the first uh, edition is, is, a, is a story for yeah, you. Know, that. that's you. But, but that's how you and yeah. I and Uche, and Uche, okay. you know, that's yeah. how you yeah. Wow, that's a wow. Yeah, you a copy of this. Of this uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's a piece of history right yeah, there. History. <laughs> that's a piece of history. So you're welcome. I grew up, in, I would say, in Omaha. here. You know, my father was a top civil servant. He was a high court judge. My mom was uh, you know, a teacher. And uh, we moved around quite a bit until we sort of settled in Omaha. Um, he stayed there for a couple of years before he retired. Okay. So my childhood, I would say, was in Omaha. And it was a nice little town. Then it was Imo State, you know. 
uh, Mbakwe was the governor of Zimbabwe. Uh, Sam Mbakwe. Uh, okay, the, the, uh, very, very similar. Uh, well, uh, they need to call him the crying governor. The crying governor. Then, you know, built the Imo State Airport and all that. He was an amazing guy. You know, we used to make jokes about yeah. how he looked, you yeah. know, because he wasn't a very handsome chap. Yeah. Anyway, um, so growing up was wonderful. I mean, in my house was next to my primary school. My mom was the headmistress of that primary school. The primary school got its name from a state library, which was next to the primary school oh. called library. The, uh, so the primary school is called Library Avenue Primary School. Oh, okay. uh, I think that place now, our house, former house now, is part of government house now. Oh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, so I that was where I developed um, the habit of personal research. Okay. Yeah, I just found out that anything you wanted to know about this world was in the books. Yeah. So I would go to the library because I was interested in art. I started reading the art section. And that was how I just sort of developed this whole attitude of being able to teach myself. Um, so it was a childhood fraught with making drawings of Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk, and running around the whole place with my friends and, you know, generally being creative. So Spider-Man, Incredible Hulk. Yeah. Well, did you remember at any point in time drawing uh, Shongo or Madioha or, you know? Beautiful. That's a very good question. No, at that point in time, we were completely brainwashed, you know, by Western you know, comics and their mythology, which was, of course, the God of Thunder then Thor. was Thor. And Thor was a member of the Avengers. So we got all sucked in, into that world of, you know, <laughs> Greek mythology and all that, but being reinvented and repackaged, you know, um, for the kids. Packaged, invented, yes. packaged. Yeah. Um, but so, it, so, but, so, so, so this is a conversation, right? So yeah, we had, but yeah. I had I had somebody okay. that was also putting a little comma on that brainwash. Okay, you know, Who was that? Uh, um, that was Bob Marley. Oh wow! Okay, yeah. So while I was reading the comics, I was also listening to Bob Marley. Nice balance. And then the guy says, emancipate yourself from mental slavery. So that is a program that was... And then at that time, South Africa was under appetite. Um, Rhodesia was under appetite. You know, Zimbabwe was still... You know, all those countries were under, you know... Um, so they, they were agitating to free yeah, yeah. those African countries. And so he... Angola, could, Namibia. Yes, all of them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they were all... And we had our equivalent to... Uh, Sonia Kosum. 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 Yes. Yeah, yeah. While Bermali was uh, singing, yeah. Sonia Kosum was echoing some of yeah. those yeah. Sentiments. sentiments. But he... Bermali taught me that you should look, read between the lines. Yeah. You know? And then Fela came into the scene, you know, and say... Uh, my brother make you know for no book. Look at man, go your way. He said, look at it. Yeah. But go your go way. way yeah. You know, so that's that was that was deep so, that profound. Yeah, so while I was absorbing you know, all this, use your sense. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I found myself at that early age putting a caveat, you know, on on all the stuff I was all absorbing. Which is interesting. So, so someone asked me. I said somewhere, somewhere that uh, it's it's okay for us to have you know our kids go to school with you know Thor backpacks, you know Spider Man, you know gear brand, you know all the merchandise. You know, yes. I mean, how big a deal the yeah. merchandise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my that, goodness! You know, yeah. MCU and I had, just, I had a Spider Man uh, lunch pack. I can still remember it. It was oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So, someone said, why is it that, you know, we all are so, you know, eager to, to gravitate towards Thor, you know, and all of that, but we, we, we probably would not be caught dead riding, you know, in Molwe with Shango. Or... <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the truth is that it's, it's so, I mean, when I look at civilization and the whole thing, really, um, there's a way I look at it, my brother. You know, I mean, I know we talk about civilization in Western terms, yeah. but what is really, what is sophistication? Is you being able to understand your own culture. Mm -hmm. Sense of self. It's a sense of self. Sense of self. I think it's, it's a basic minimum on, you know, knowing who you are. Yes. And, and finding, again, you know how we all grew up, 
thinking our, you know, our parents and our uncles were, were flawless, you know. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, right? <laughs> then after a while, everybody thought that was the first thing. Yes. <laughs> we thought that was last. <laughs> after a while, you started finding out that, okay, these guys are basically yeah. humans and yeah. they had the good points and they had, you know, their, their yes. weaknesses. But at the end of the day, that's basically the, the truth about humanity. Yeah. Yeah. There's the good, there's the bad, and there's the. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in between, exactly. you know, some people call it ugly, <laughs> somebody will call it, the, you know. <laughs> now, but uh, for some reason, we never thought that the, the Western way, or you know, the Western way, be it the culture, be it the religion, be whatever it was, however yeah. it was, it was sold to us, yeah. we we always kind of saw it as spotless, yes, gospel truth, oh, yeah. right? Uh, so to even be in a space to even interrogate some of those positions. Yeah. Um, you were you were scared. Oh, you, were yeah. either, you were either afraid to, to think or if you did think you were made to feel guilty. Exactly. You know, for, for, for thinking. What 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 could be could there be a, a more potent way to enslave people than to attack their minds and Ooh. have them completely devalue themselves. It's a, it's a, it was very, done very systematically and very deliberately, you know, and I was watching a movie um, some years back called Monuments Man. It was, it was a Hollywood movie about this, you know, during the Second World War, towards the end of it, and noticed that Hitler was systematically taking all the artworks yeah. from all the European countries that he had conquered. And they sent this group of American yeah, yeah. curators to go and protect those artworks. Apparently, Hitler was building a museum in his village, yeah. you know, to house all those things. Somebody made a comment and said the best way to subjugate of people is take away evidence of their past. Yeah. So those monuments in France, in Italy, in Austria, and all those places represented the past, the true personality of those Europeans. If you took them away, then they would lose yeah. their sense of self. Yeah, this, and this, this, this location and just at that point, in that movie, I said, my goodness, that is what they did to us. Of course, that's what they did to all the, all the Benin trench uh, artifacts out and stuff in, in the British Museum. That they, was... they didn't just take it out. They now turned our people against the ones that were left. Yes. Called it fetish. They called it fetish. Called it uh, animists. Yes. Called, you know, your language is vernacular. Vernacular. Yeah. You know, and all that. And we used, we used to get we used to get punished in class. Yeah, for speaking. For speaking in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I grew up in that era. era. You know, and... So at the end of the day, you know, our people, major part of the problems that we have is a warped sense of self and trying to just figure out who you are, you know, and uh, because there's no unified, there's a bit of confusion with that. So people are just all over the place in terms of, and are, people are always in search. Everybody needs that kind of closure where you say, I am absolutely sure of who I am. But I'm worried. I'm worried about an angle. There's an angle yeah. I'm really worried about now. Yeah. Um, and that angle is, and I might be wrong. You, you, you feel free to express a contrary opinion. Yeah. These days, I'm beginning to feel like the the real dilemma with with the Nigerian experience is not what has been done to us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Is the fact that we appear unable, not not unwilling, but unable yeah. to unlearn to to uh, okay this is how I put it like I, 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 I speak to young people yeah and in the uh, course of our conversations even older people like, yeah. I found out that there's a real fear of accepting that we might have been misled so I, what I ask is if someone were to tell you someone sat you down and gave you evidence clear evidence yeah. proving that everything you thought you knew was wrong. Yeah. Do you have the, the courage to, to accept, accept it? To, yes, to accept, accept it. it and, then just, and then, you know, uh, 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 chart a new trajectory. Let's do chart. Mm -hmm. Just, just that accept basic it. acknowledgement that mm -hmm. everything I've been told, everything I thought I knew in the past 10, 20, 30 years Has been, was wrong. Would, yeah. would, you, would you be able to assimilate and accept that or would you rather say, eh, no, no, 
I, yeah. I prefer to, you know, yeah. deny, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 I'm going to leave it deny. Yeah. What you're saying is absolutely, um, is the reality. I mean, I see this a lot. I mean, people, sometimes you see people making comments that, oh man, I, you know, in fact, if we were still under colonial rule, we would have been better off. Mm -hmm. You know, and those kind of comments. Um, that confusion is still there. But I also say to them, do people need to open their eyes and understand, you know, how truly blessed we are and what we are capable of. So it's the mindset problem mm -hmm. that we have. Okay, good. We are not the only people that were colonized. Yeah. We are not the only people. In fact, if you go to Europe and you read their history, I mean, they went through a hell on, in each other's hands. Yeah. You know, and so what they did to us is what they normally do to themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so let's go and pillage. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the pillage and pillage from, from the, uh, uh, the Greek Empire to, to the Roman Empire to the Ottoman Empire. The way they were done, they were okay, okay, guys. Let's, 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 let
and all that, the Ten Commandments, especially love your neighbor as yourself. You should love yourself first, you know, and then you can show love to others. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those, and but it runs across Hinduism and all the yeah. religions and all that, and those preaching karma and all that. Yeah. So I usually say, you know what? I mean, every time a religion comes along and people believe it is power, that power to control the mind yeah. is absolute power. If you get what I mean, mm -hmm. and you know what they say about absolute power yeah, and how it corrupts, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. The, the thing is this, mm -hmm. why I always shy away from religion is that, look, it is not, it's not based on uh, a lot of theorizing, okay? It is a belief. Blessed are those who do not see, but yet they believe. It's based on faith and things like that. So um, really talking about it and delving into it, if you remove the belief that people have, you better replace it with another one. What about replace it with enlightenment? Yes. Because you better than enlightenment. Yes, and you have to replace it as systematically and as effectively. Yeah. Because when you take it away, and you don't replace it systematically, you may be faced with, I don't know if you watch some of those movies where they have this crazy AI that somebody will create a very, very intelligent computer mm -hmm. that they now say, you know what, this thing is not more intelligent than human beings. Okay, wrong things. Eventually, the AI will now decide that I think the problem we have is humanity. No, no, it's the Terminator. And then it will, it will now... It will <laughs> what were you with the Terminator? What were you with the Terminator? I don't yes. Wait, wait, wait. Of course. I mean, the original Terminator. Bro. I want to remember, man. That was something. You know, I can remember Rambo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But they, they always end up concluding oh, that the I problem... was in secondary school. Yeah. You know, the first time I saw the Terminator... I told myself that this, 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 the machines. Yes. This is the end. Of the <laughs> this is the apocalypse. Exactly. You know? But, but they always end up concluding that the problem is humanity. Isn't the problem humanity? Oh well, you know. So if you take away somebody's beliefs, religion, and I say, you know what? Wasn't there when Thanos was Go trying ahead. to help us fix? Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, <laughs> so a lot of times, you know. Um, we, we, for me, I believe that. Yeah, I mean, I love the whole idea of love and all that. It does ha help harmonize society in a lot of ways and keep people. Uh, okay, so day. so this mm -hmm. is this is a problem. There's a doctrine or the mm -hmm. teaching of love. I'm admirer of of Christ's teaching, the theory of of what it's about. Yeah, I believe in God, but I don't see God actively in religion. I don't see Christ's teachings. Yeah, in Christianity. Yeah. So this, so to, to, to conclude this, this and this is one of the reasons why you know yeah. I'm I'm like I'm really standoffish as far as organization is concerned because I tell people that every time the will of God and the will of man clashes, that the will of man in practical terms you know supersedes the will of God, <laughs> and they'll be mused, they're arguing, they're fighting, all this crazy young people, <laughs> they're arguing with now. Like, say, go back in history, right? Every time, when God says, love your neighbor as yourself, but man wants to expand territory, man yes. wants to have economic, you know, uh, a, exactly. a, a, a advantage, mm -hmm. what does he do? do? Does he love his neighbor as himself? Or does <laughs> by, he... by killing, by <laughs> taking his thoughts. You know? so, that, so in practical terms, yeah. uh, we, we, that's why out there, you have a lot of people who called God than people who are called by God, Yeah. right? Because you see, you, you, you actually, you see those guys and you know that, Obviously, that this guy called God. Exactly. He can't call himself. <laughs> you know? After he called God, he can't call himself, right? But, so. your, 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 your painting, you know, yes. I mean, people that are photographer, photographer, as, as a painter, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know. Well, my days of painting were just, I would say, absolute bliss, really. I mean, um, I, like I said, gradually from my childhood obsession with drawing, you know, I went to law school and I graduated as a lawyer. I was in Enugu for four or five years and then that was how I came to Lagos to come to law school. But I had decided in my third year that I was going to be a painter and that that was what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Um, it, I just had an aha moment, you know, I read a book 
called, please, if anybody knows this book, they should send it to me so okay. I can find it okay. again. It's called The Spirit of Apollo. Okay. Apollo okay. being the Apollo the space, okay. space, okay. Okay. the Apollo the space shuttle. Space shuttle. Okay. They, 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 they're they daring to say we can put a man on the moon. So it's just a regular, um, you know, inspired by Napoleon Hill's uh, Think and Grow Rich and all that. Yeah. So it's just a normal American self-help book. But this guy started the book through some biblical things and then it just ends with man, know thyself. I think just struck me. He says, look, it's not you. It's not your father, your mother, your friends or anybody. You're the only one that knows where you should be and who you should be and follow that path. So I decided that, you know, this is what I'm going to enjoy. And this is what I'm going to do. It, my roommate's daughter had gone mad. This line you just, you know, that's yes. tough. I'll share my experience about, you yeah. know, a line, but it was from a fame. Yeah. And that single line, yeah. that can, single line. Can I, be I, a trigger. It just, it just, it, the entire yeah. trajectory of my life yes. just changed. Yeah. That, one. that was what happened to me. Before then, I was conflicted. I was the law student. I was going to be. I was looking at Ghani Fawemi and wrote to me Williams. Those and were, that would have been cool. Mm, those are the big. You know, you in the room. But come with the with, with, with the <laughs> Anyway, so that created the clarity for me and resolved my conflict. Yeah. You know, and in fact, there and then I wanted to change course. It was only when I went to Soka to check the fine art department and realized that I was really a better artist than a lot of the people that were in fine art. I said, I beg, I'll go and finish my law. By then, I was already a very popular artist in school. I had a name, a, a, a brand name in school called De Zulu. Mm. Well, after watching Shaka Zulu, yeah. I enjoyed the movie yeah. so much. Yeah. I said, you know what, I'll call my brand. So somebody that took white people and enslaved them during yeah. those times. I said, that's a yeah, nice, that's, that's, that's a hero. That's my man, it's okay. Shaka Zulu. Kosi Koma. Anyway. The same way, you know, the, the, the Ethiopians, uh, the, the, yes, the Ethiopians, you know, had, you know, yeah. uh, this, uh, this guy can, can, can I mean, this, this guy must, must, must be So, so that was how I started my design company then in school called the Zulu. It got so popular in school. That was when I understood the fundamentals of building a brand. You know, that all you needed to do was to be excellent in your craft and society will come to you and they would pay you whatever you ask. So it was in school I developed that theory. And so when I got out of law school, I decided I was going to paint. So I just settled in my aunt's balcony. I had this very benevolent aunt, Mrs. Obiezani, okay. who would accommodate confused, unemployed young lawyers. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> say that they're going to be artists instead of practicing law. <laughs> and so, law, was, well, law was a big deal. Oh, right? yeah. If, if, if you had a child who, mm. who showed any level of, of intellectual capacity, yes. it was, you were either nudging him towards medicine yes, or, or law. law. Every other thing was you, yeah, so great. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, it was in my house. I mean, like, my father would say, look, you know, prophet, top professionals, you know, lawyer or doctor. Yeah. You know, every other person has to explain what they are doing. You know, <laughs> in long phrases, yeah, so, yeah, so, 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 yeah, the engineer said, so What do you do, engineer? You know, so basically, if you're a lawyer, it's okay, straight you know, up, you know, straight up. <laughs> so, uh, so painting, painting. Yeah. Let, let me pull you up a little bit, yeah. Uh, so I mean, you know, I'm a fan of your work, I checked out a lot of your stuff back in the day before you yeah. became a famous photographer, yeah. Um, on behalf of yourself and your colleagues. What's, what's the obsession with nudity? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, to tell you the truth, you know, the human form has been an obsession for me and it's still an obsession for me. Um, I, I find it timeless. What I mean is, we wear these clothes and all these clothes represent, um, it's a kind of statement, you know? I mean, the adornments that you wear. Your clothes are performing the function of not just protecting you, but it sort of represent how you feel yeah. and which in which cultural space you're yeah, playing yeah, yeah. and what you want to exude. But deep down inside us, we are naked. And that is who we truly are, our natural form. Um, over 
centuries. We have come to paint that the human form and respond to it through different permutations of culture. There are some cultures that revere it. There are yeah. some cultures that call abhor it, it, that abhor it yeah. and call it a shame. And, it's a, and then designate different parts of it as shameful, yeah. you know, and all that. But what got me obsessed with the human form was that when you present, when you study it and you present it, you can then start to see, you know, just, not just the beauty of it, but the, the, the bareness of it, the truth of who we truly are. I mean, if you line everybody up without their clothes, then they are truly equal. Technically. Yes, they are truly, you cannot tell, um, unless maybe you start looking at other things that they have done to their body. But if you look at the body in its purity, it is just a human being. Why, why, why am I struggling to agree with you, Felix? Yeah. Well, uh, if, if, you, if, you, if, if you stripped everybody naked, yes, um, and you say they're equal, where, where, I mean, where does the term, you know, penis envy come from? No, but what I mean by men's equal. obsessions with, no, no. you know, with the size. Yeah, but then, yeah, but, then, but, but again, but, when you go flip it another way, you look at women to then the obsession with, you know, body shaping. These are, these that. things okay. now are then the permutations of culture. Okay. These are biases. These are these are filters through which you've been told to look at the human form. Okay. You see, at, at the end of the day, a human being is a human being. But your models are your models are busted. Well, you know, you need to look at my works. Okay. I recently I had an exhibition um, of nudes. Okay, and I I I also learned a lot okay. about you know um, my own perception. Okay, um, it was done like this. Somebody brought all the subjects. And we decided to bring them from regular people, from regular life. So not models. Okay. okay? So just random folks who, doctors, lawyers, you know, regular people. And it was the day I was meeting them that I would then decide the kind of story I want to tell. I would listen to them and then I'll make a video. You know, so I finished this. Then I, that was, I even then started to realize that in, in all these years I've been shooting nudes, I've been attracted to a certain type of body type okay. based on my perception of yeah, yeah, based on my perception because we've seen, you know, the perfect sculptures of Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, you know, and through the eyes of those people, we've come to, yeah. you know, personify what the perfect body, body yeah. is supposed to be like. You know, even Leonardo da Vinci drew the the, the, the anatomy of a, a, a human being, the perfect proportions. Yeah. You know, you can see that. Uh, so we, we, we start to see humanity, then we start to separate, and then we start to choose what we present. I don't know if you understand. Mm -hmm. yes. so after having this, my last exhibition, I was like, okay. Then I started questioning, you know, under these clothes, we are so unique and different. Yeah. And we've perfected the act of hiding our body so much and only those who satisfy a certain criteria yeah. want to reveal it. Others are then pinching and pushing and pulling to satisfy a particular and look. It's, it's amazing, you know, you, you know how huge an industry yeah. This perception, this what's what's with like it's, we're it's discussing, money. you know, casually now ah, about you know, it's not... size and you know how how huge a deal it is. Oh. People are, are falling into depression because of body shapes. Oh, yes. Types. People are, are, are getting on, uh, uh, overly uh, uh, confident in themselves and we're well, happy to work you know, with... People with are great, going under the knife. With great bodies and empty heads. Yes. You know, you know, <laughs> I know. So, so all of this... What's this obsession about about the physical form? Why? why? No, let me tell you. Um, the human body, because, well, it's, it's been acculturated to be hidden, Acculturated, I like that word. To be hidden, um, uh, because it's, it's a land, it's a culture thing. It doesn't, the, 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 the fact, it's, it's gradually, as a child, they keep telling you to go and wear your clothes. Are you not ashamed of yourself? Yeah. You know, from the age of uh, one to the age of probably 10, you, you, you'll be, uh, depending on how tenacious the people around you are at shaming you with yeah, your body yeah. you, you you're happy to run around naked yeah you know where you're with your visitors and your five-year-old runs out of the bathroom my mom would take me I'm out and, and put <laughs> me on the bowl and bath me and <laughs> exactly all my other guys are sure like you know they're being like, yes 
<laughs> it's no big deal. You know, like if, if these days, even when you're, you're, you're trolling me, but my mom was saying that I shouldn't pay them any attention. Exactly. Like, only royalty get party like that. If you know, so she said I'm, I'm a chief, right? So that's why. <laughs> you see, you see that program? That's a serious program. You understand? So I want to tell you that you just look at the different stages. Uh, but the truth is that okay. if I'm by myself, I know about far away. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> exactly. Now, so that's a part of it. Exactly. Anyway, the package. Yes, so they don't care that it's not the process. Anyway, but what I what I've found out that is a learned culture, okay. and they, if some people unlearn it and yeah. they go into the notice camps and all that. Then at the time, you know, the whole relationship of human beings and clothing is so funny. You know, I mean, before the colonial masters came here. An 18-year-old woman is walking about just with something tied on her waist, with her boobs dangling yeah, all over the place. Was sexual, nobody and sexualized it. Nobody sexualized it. Who cared whether it was standing or not? If she had a baby, it should fall. It's a natural um, yeah. movement gravity. of things. You understand? And, gravity, the, the law of gravity. and there was no obsession with it having to stand. Who cares? What the hell is that? I don't know if you understand. This obsession where everybody is carrying their boobs, you know, with all sorts of mechanics to keep it standing. Yeah. You know, so you, all you kind of technology. all sorts of technologies. Some people, you know, go under the knife to keep it standing. It's it's it's, it's, it's the law of nature. It, it, it probably do it for, for you for you guys, though. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is that if you don't look at it, you find out that it is just us. It is our body. Okay, sorry, mm -hmm. sorry, digression. Mm -hmm. There's something I call extreme makeup. Yeah, I didn't start noticing until a couple of years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but funny enough. I, I do a bit of traveling. Yes. And I found out the, the Nigerian woman of 2021. Yes. She goes hard on makeup. They call it face beating. You know, <laughs> see. Let what me what are you, I mean, where? Okay, where, these are these are areas where. In the devil. Is yeah, you know, did you. Have you watched one? There was a series. Um, uh, or I think it was a documentary. Is it Chris Rock? I did something about women's hair. Yeah, good hair. Good hair. Uh, hair. And I will... It was beautiful. Uh, yeah, beautiful it was a beautiful uh, piece of documentary. And I take the advice of, was it, uh, there was a rapper, uh, you know, um, at the end of it, what he said was, you know what, whatever these women want to put on their hair, leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. yeah, because, well, um, so it's, a, it's an area where I play, you know, I'm a photographer and I work with makeup artists and all that. And um, one thing about Nigeria is that we get um, extreme. Whenever we adopt something, we adopt it to the extreme. I mean, uh, the Ghanaians will tell you about Azonto and how they now, we are now struggling to own Azonto. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Brown was like, yeah, that Nigerian dance, you know, has <laughs> to Ghanaian. I said, no! <laughs> <laughs> it's Ghanaian, this I'm Nigerian. Sure. Like, okay. <laughs> you understand? So, when I remember the very first time somebody told me he was a makeup artist. I was like, wait, you mean like makeup? Say yes. That's what you do for a living? Say yes. I say, incredible. I'd never met a makeup artist yeah. before. And that's not too long ago. Okay, okay. Bro, that's um, a guy called Biohastrop. Yeah, very Bio tall guy. He's a friend of mine. Yeah. In Unilag together. In Unilag, yeah. exactly. You understand? And it was when he finished making up a, a model, I was like, oh. Now, that type of makeup is different from the makeup that the regular woman on the street wears. That's the makeup for editorial. That's the makeup that they use for those Vogue and for advertising. It's not normal makeup. It's it's almost like face painting. You 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 want to recreate yeah. something else. You understand? And before the days of Photoshop, you needed to take away all the blemishes. You needed to. I don't get you. Understand? You know what I you know what I would tell my wife? Yeah. Please, when they do this makeup, they should just make sure that I still recognize you that you're still you. Well, the truth is this. Let me explain to you. You know. So when he did that, it was very good for me for the kind of image 
I wanted to make. In fact, I had become a makeup artist before meeting him because I feel like, oh, there's this smoky eye thing, you know, um, you accentuate the cheekbones and you, you're trying to actually change the facial structure of your subject a little bit, you know, to fit. So it's a bit of fantasy. It's not reality. Yeah, yeah. So that was then. But this thing had gone ballistic where it has moved away from the editorials to the normal day woman who wants to look like that Beyonce on the cover of Vogue. You get what I mean? Now, it's like this, okay? Because the makeup that you're putting on is not... I remember when my mom, in those days, their makeup was... They put powder and do like this. Okay? And rub their face with it. And put an eyeliner, put lipstick, you're done. Quickly move. Now, my makeup friends are going to make people up before they leave the house on Sunday. For months. And it's a whole vibe. Yeah, it's, it's a huge so from, from the good, mad industry. From the good hair, they say, okay, yeah. don't touch a black woman's hair. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't touch a black woman's hair. So now you, can, don't even, you can't even touch her face. Yeah, so, my, so from here up. My this, advice is let me take the, the advice of that last guy in good hair. Say, look. Leave it alone. Eh, whatever <laughs> women want to put on their face, as far as it makes them happy, leave them alone. <laughs> they find it attractive, though. Would you, would you, if, if you were single, would you, mm. like, would you fall in love? Would you chase a woman just because, you know, she she, she has extreme makeup? Then? Well, I advice I always give people is this. Whatever you present to the world with confidence, they will accept. Okay. If you present your face with absolutely no makeup, they will accept it. If you, have, if you present it with confidence, they'll accept it. If you present your face well made up and made up to perfection, they will also accept it and reject your real face. Yeah, true. You know, if you present yourself as a world woman leader and your time gele just putting it on top of your hair like this, that's a konjiwala. That's just a, that's just a bad feeling. Who cares about whether she has lipstick on? You know, she's a konjiwala after all. And she has presented herself with that girl there. She's oh, not. She's, yeah. She made. She made her own rules. You, know, you decide. Okay. You know. Um, so that's why I said it is. If it makes you feel better, I cannot advise you on what what okay. you want to yeah, do. Sure. It's a multi billion dollar industry. If you, you know? advise them, say they're not yeah. going to. No, don't even don't even case. try. You know. <laughs> Sometimes people come and ask me, Kelechi, you're the you're the photographer, you're the image maker. What is your standard of beauty? Who is the most beautiful? Who is the fairest of them all? I say, but I'm not that mirror in your, you know. Mirror around the world. Mirror the world. The world. The you understand? Beauty comes in different stages. You understand? And we just must learn to appreciate it from wherever it comes. Okay. Okay. I, I mean, I, 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 word. <laughs> There's nothing else to say. Um, so while you're thinking of what you're going to share with us on recall, um, could you give us a two minutes masterclass on photography? Okay, two minutes. Yes. First and foremost, if you're uh, planning to be a photographer, yes, you need to learn how the camera works, aperture shutter speeds, and all that. And that in itself is a bare minimum. Um, you need to learn it so much that you no longer think about it. So for some of you who don't like mathematics, who don't like physics, I am sorry. You have to pass through that, you know, just to understand how your camera sees and why it does what it does. Shutter speeds, aperture involves a few numbers, you know, F1, F2, F. 16 after 22, you know. Um, now I understand why I'm such a lousy photographer. Measuring and all that. That will put you in the mind of the camera to understand how it plays. So when you finish with that, that in itself does not make you a photographer. It just makes you somebody who knows how to operate camera. <laughs> <laughs> so that is a mistake some people make. They do learn all that and quickly they start collecting money. So the camera in itself is just a tool to be a proper high-end photographer. You need to learn how to see. That in itself is the main thing. 
So you need to learn how to see. So you then do learn, start to learn the vagaries of visuality, design, you know, perspective, color theory. You start to learn over the years how people have been able to express visually and study it. Art history. You need to understand it. After you've done that, you've learned how to see, right? Thank you very much. The next thing you then need to do is to educate yourself so that you can have an opinion. So they say the artist is a mirror of his environment. But then if the mirror is opaque and it's not clear, then what will it reflect? So you must clean your mirror and absorb. And in order to do that, you have to study. You have to study humanity. You have to study life. You have to study. You have to understand what it is you want to express and have an opinion. Because we say, oh, you know, the question is this. Why should I listen to you? Who they... Are you? That's the question. You know, that is the question. Who are you that I should listen to you? Because your photograph, for it to be compelling enough to talk to me, demands my attention. But who are you? So you must lace your mind with enlightenment, with history, with understanding of humanity. Then you can then have an opinion through your craft. Okay, fantastic. Why is he so expensive? Why is he so expensive? Can you share my opinion? Oh, well, you know, there are different models of business, okay? You can have, um, you can, you can, you know, there, there, there are different models of business. Those who make a lot of money in, in business are those who have found a way to, you know, deliver their goods to, a multitude of people. So look at all the most richest people in the world, you know, the Jeff Bezos, the Elon Musk, the... Uh, David um, Oyelipo. You know, but for artists like us who are making work with our hand, you know, there is a limit to our life and there's a limit to the amount of work we can produce. So uh, once you follow the laws of economics, you know, when the demand goes up, the price goes up. And when there is a limited supply, there's a finite small number of people who will ever get the chance to come in front of my lens. So when you put that into consideration, the price will keep going up. But that does not stop us from also servicing a different series of people. That's why I started um, um, publishing a magazine at a yeah. time, you yeah. know, then I had many a magazine. Many a. And yeah. what I was doing with many a magazine was to deliver Kelechi Amadio B visuality to the hands of people for just 1,000 naira. You take a copy and you hold on to it, you know. So uh, uh, if I truly want to make a lot of money and be like uh, my friends and uh, Bill Gates and all those, I should be thinking. Uh, not to service the 1% of the 1%, but to service even if it is 20%, you know, and of the 99%. Uh, of the 99%. <laughs> exactly. Fantastic. You understand? <laughs> well, let me tell you the most remarkable experience I've had. Um, I don't know which year, 90, 90, was it 1994, 95? I don't know, that the Pope came to Nigeria, you remember? Pope John Paul yeah, Pope II, the second, yeah, one of those years. I was in my aunt's balcony painting. I had my friend Stan, who, who was uh, my old schoolmate, and he was like my manager, and then we were all fresh out of school and navigating the Lagos hustle world. So the Pope was coming to Nigeria, and I said, I would like my painting to be in the Pope's collection. And it sounded a bit like Pinky and the Brain, you know? Just a bunch of my, my, mice in the, in the cage <laughs> and saying, no, not what are you going to you're do? Not anymore. What are you going to do? We are going to take over the world, <laughs> lab rats. <laughs> so nobody knew who I was. So how am I going to get my painting to the Pope? You know that kind of thing? Yeah. And the Pope, you know the one that the Pope finished coming, Abacha went and died, and Nigeria yeah, yeah, yeah. like, hey, hey, the Pope has done it for us. 
Hey, man. So, <laughs> so, so I was like, awesome, man. So me and my friend, we are headstrong. We're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what type of painting are we going to do? We're just busy thinking about it, you know? And I always tell the story to just to explain this, what people call miracle or whatever. And then the phone rings. And then somebody says, oh, Kelechi, um, Nigerian um, Council of Bishops or something uh, are planning to give a present to the Pope. And I recommended you to them that you could make a painting. Wow. So uh, I've set up an appointment with uh, the Secretary General of Nigerian Catholic Secretariat, Father Kuka. Okay. <laughs> God. I said, for real? He said, yes. It's okay, I'm, I'm going to be there. I met Father Kuka. Really, it just didn't make sense. But then they say, throw it out in the universe. Yeah. You know? So... I met with Father Kuka, and you know, interesting chap. Yeah. First of all, his office was a wall of books. I'm like, man, this guy, did you read all these books? <laughs> anyway, the guy spoke to me, said, you know, with his, uh, his uh, accent. I love that his accent, yeah, too. <laughs> He's, you know, we would like to make a painting of uh, Father Tansi you want to give to the Pope. Oh, you think you can do that? But I negotiated with this guy, they paid me. I made this painting, framed it, put it in a box, put my complimentary card at the back of it, <laughs> and delivered to them. That's and that's they that's sent that's it to the Pope. That's Several that's months later, he yeah. sent me a letter from the Vatican. Oh, wow. Acknowledging that, you know, they had received oh, it. Fantastic. And so it, was, so it was one of the most remarkable things that happened to me, you know, as a beginner. It taught me that truly, Whatever it is you are interested in doing, send it out there to the universe. And don't bother about whether it's going to happen or how it's going to happen. Just send it out. Cool. So that's a great story. What, what's, what's the brew today? <laughs> what's the brew today? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you had it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, they're brutal. They're brutal. Uh, here we go. Um, card number one. Oh, number one. Number one. Uh, okay. So the question, who is the most overrated artist on the scene at the moment? Hmm. Poison. Poison. Overrated. <laughs> Poison. Look at the little seat. Catch his face. That's the expression. What? <laughs> okay, so you pick a second one, and hopefully you will try to avoid the uh, poison this time. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Next card. Five. Number five. Crime one person. Mm -hmm. Chop knock with fist bump the other one and okay. blank cough the last person. So we're gonna give you three names. Okay. In two categories. Okay. You crown, fist bump, or curve. Okay. Let's go. Hmm. Oh, these are these are amazing photographers. Yes, that's why we put the question mm. that we'll put the poison next to it. These are amazing photographers. Okay. The crown goes to T.Y. Bello. Okay. The fist bump goes to Uche. Yeah. And, the uh, and the curve goes to Lucky. Okay. Now, okay. that does not in any way. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are according to my personal relationship with them. Your last uh, uh, take. Two. Number two, okay. Who is your worst celebrity? Client. Celebrity client. Worst. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I'm thinking though. Worst. Poison. <laughs> 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 
Oh, it's been so much fun vibing with you on the spot. <laughs> my friend, my brother, thank you very much. I'm grateful to have you. Same here. It was fun. It was fun. God bless you. It was bless fun. You. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> These guys are too busy. And they don't even have time. They don't know who is Yoruba Igwe outside. They're thinking, oh, you want us to do a show in Kano? How many people are there? Let's go make some money. For real. <laughs> I don't know if you understand. For real. Now, these guys, they give me hope in the new Nigeria. Now, these guys are harnessing that energy. It's 200 million people controlling a whole continent through that continent controlling the rest of the world. It is energy. It is powerful. We. It is brewing. All the Nigerians that are, are in Canada, in America, in England, in Malaysia, they are absorbing work ethic. They are absorbing new cultures. They are absorbing this, and they'll come back to this place once you have a good leader. They are already sending billions of dollars to us every month. It is not a joke. They are not sending that money into a pit. They are investing in where they want to retire or where they want to actually build. Once you create any kind of stability, economic stability, with intelligent leadership, the prosperity that will befall this country, the rest of the world cannot understand. Most of, most of. I'm aligned with those thoughts. Thank you very much. This is a nice, this is a nice one. Um, I, I think we need so much more of these kind of yeah. programs where you can all talk. Yeah, there's a lot.